Hello everyone, I'm a boss, and with me here today I have Team 10355 Project Peacock from Oklahoma with just an absolutely amazing looking robot. They were the second captain at the Oklahoma State Championship, and then they they won the design they won the Innovate Award at the Arkansas State Championship. Well deserved. We're going to talk about their hardware, their design, all and more coming up on First Updates Now. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million from robotic scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first choose to go to Kettering University at Kettering.edu. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Let's get started with just an overview of your robot. It seems very non-traditional, right? It doesn't just abide by the meta this year. Walk us through it. Okay, so our robot uh, is based on our Rocker 8-wheel drive drivetrain. Um, we've got Rhino wheels in the middle, Omni wheels on the outside to prevent scrubbing. Uh, it's 10.4 to 1 final ratio, four motors in the back. We have a four bar drop down intake on the front uh, with two stage rollers and we'll demonstrate that in a little bit. We have automatic cargo detection for when we're intaking, uh, both for balls and blocks. Uh, our arm is actually a, that's the program is running so it's going to be locked. So intake deploys like that. Our arm is a double uh, virtual four bar on a turret. So uh, we control the turret with a PID loop that we programmed ourselves. Uh, our duct mechanism is a continuous timing belt so that we can score ducts from any point on the front side of the robot. Um, yeah. That's a good overview. No, I think that's amazing. Let's jump into your drivetrain. You mentioned you have an eight-wheel drive rocker system. Is this something you've had all the way like from day one, or was this something you decided to implement later in the season? So this was a day one design. Uh, we considered several types of drivetrain. We considered uh, traditional Mechanum, Mechanum with suspension, uh, six-wheel drive, even W10-wheel drive. We landed on rocker eight-wheel drive because we figured that having some kind of passive suspension to go over the bars was going to be mandatory uh, for smoothness and consistency, as well as having a lot of traction to be able to kind of knock other robots around. This robot, as you can tell, is 18 by 18 inches. Uh, we can play some pretty heavy defense with this. Sure, and you know, speaking of the whole 18 by 18, was building a wide robot something you guys chose to do this year? Was that sort of just like a design constraint? You couldn't fit everything into a skinny package? It wasn't necessarily a deliberate design. Uh, it kind of followed with making a rocker eight wheel drive. We considered thinning it at one point, but then uh, went back on that because of the scrubbing issue. Um, it works pretty well to have it be 18 inches wide. We can just fly over the barrier in any orientation. Sure. We're not really limited by that gap. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, we've seen that match after match. You guys just fly over the barrier. It's like it doesn't even exist for you guys. Let's go on to your intake. I think intakes are something that teams have iterated on a ton this season. How has your guys' intake changed throughout the season? And, you know, what, like, makes it as good as it is today? So the intake has gone through several iterations. Uh, we actually designed six versions before we built this final one. Uh, the biggest issue we've had is with the ramp hitting the ground and then skipping the belts on this servo. So the way that this works is there's two servos for deploying it. There's a linkage on either side. There's a servo in the bottom that controls the angle of the ramp, which we do dynamically update throughout the match to keep it within the sizing constraints because we actually had issues early on with the tip of the ramp sticking over the tape line inside the warehouse and giving us uh, warehouse operations penalties. But anyway, we've gone through several iterations with getting the ramp in the right position and with getting this second roller operational. So uh, one of the issues that we had with that second roller and the reason that it's there at all is the front roller was just kicking the blocks out the top. Uh, so we needed something to carry them up over the ramp into the bucket. Uh, that's gone through 
just these two rollers have gone through four sub iterations. Wow, and how do you guys do those iterations? Is this something like you uh, like cut piece after piece? I mean, those look like very nice polycarbonate uh, pieces. So do you guys like iterate using Actobotics or like some sort of uh, commercial off the shelf system or do you like make custom pieces over and over again? So this season we've gone for custom over and over again. Uh, we machine all of our parts in house. So we'll throw polycarbonate on the CNC. We do, obviously, all of this is designed in CAD beforehand. So we've done a lot of experimentation with different geometries in CAD. Um, but a, a lot of it is just, this looks like it needs to be about five millimeters lower or higher or uh, back about 10 mil, something like that. Yeah. So we machine new ones. No, I mean, I think that's a great explanation of your intake. Let's go on to your deposit. I want to start personally with the turret. Uh, I think there's a lot of different ways to have a turreting mechanism. How do you guys do it specifically, and why did you decide to do it like that? Um, so we mostly just uh, thought, uh, we noticed how easily the servos were packaged into here. Um, they just fit like perfectly. So um, we figured we would try out servos and then maybe switch to a motor if they didn't work for us. Um, down in here, like under the pulley, we have a uh, radial bearing, I think from West Coast products, right? Yes. Um, and then just a big pulley on top and a 3D printed bearing block trapping it in. It's a very simple turret design. Sure, and have you guys had any issues with this or is this something you would look to do season after season? Um, at the beginning of the year, we had uh, super speed servos, but they had a lot of lag and um, we ended up switching them to, I think, speed servos. And they still are a little slow. I would, if I were to like redesign this robot from the start, I would probably use a motor. Um, but yeah, the servos work well for what we do. Awesome, and you know, let's go into your deposit. You mentioned you have a double vir reverse virtual four bar or double virtual four bar. How does that work, and why did you guys decide that as a design? Um, so it's kind of like virtual four bar, except these belts are driven. So if you want to dump this, um, oh yeah, sorry. Um, the um, it, it's like if you took virtual four bar and then drove the belt so that you could have another output, basically a motion output. Um, so we did this with two arms um, and then used the last output for a dump. And then this whole thing actually, this stays parallel to this bar because the servo is mounted right here. Um, this whole arm, by the way, is inspired by uh, 971's power up robot. Um, just it's it was really fun to watch mostly, and since we were already going for an aggressive drivetrain style, we figured we didn't need a lot of extension. Um, so we wanted to go with something fancy like this. Awesome, yeah. And let's talk about your deposit box itself. Has it changed throughout the season, or has it sort of stayed static and just worked from the beginning? We were actually about to change it for CRI, and then we did VCC, and um, it just sucked all of our time out. But um, basically, if we were to go about this again, we would add a roof part um, so that you c we could extend the arm while going over the terrain. Um, just to add, uh, like cut off maybe a second of our cycle time. Sure, and um, I think the last thing I want to touch on hardware-wise is just the whole aesthetic of the robot. I mean, what, did you guys struggle with like achieving this throughout the season, or was it just like you guys were dead set on having this aesthetic the whole way through? Honestly, keeping up the aesthetic was relatively easy. Uh, we have several 3D printers that we can leverage. We just bought two colors of filament, split them up between multiple members, and then when we would ship out the files for printing, we'd say, this needs to be blue, this needs to be pink. We've got a couple of parts, the bucket and the turret pulley that are actually two color prints um, on a, a Prusa with a multi-material unit. The ramp is printed in two colors using a stop at Z height. Um, but, it, you know, it, it was for fun, but it ended up coming out really well. and. Keeping it up was not that difficult. Yeah, I mean, I think anyone, I don't think, I don't, everyone would have a tough time arguing that this is like not an amazing looking robot. It's just so well built. I Thank you. Another thing that's really impressive about you guys is your software automation. Your teleop is just so fluid, and I think a big part of that is your automations, your driver enhancements. How do you guys decide like which driver enhancements to add, and what do you have? So throughout the season, we pay attention to how our strategy is evolving. Um, whether intentionally or by accident, and we will take that feedback and add new driver enhancements. So for example, on our arm, uh, instead of having 
the drivers manually output the arm to the position they need it to go to, we can hit one button to go to the first preset position, which is the top of the Alliance Hub. We can go to the second, and then with another button, we can send it all the way out the back under the bottom to do shared or now cooperative hub. We also have buttons for returning the arm, dumping the bucket. Uh, intaking is one button as well. Uh, that entire system, it's just one single button there and then uh, returning that as well. Yeah, awesome, and you know, let's talk a little bit about CRI. You guys mentioned that for the Cooperative Hub, what's your guys' strategy looking, in, looking going into CRI? Are you guys going to be running that co-op hub? Or are you gonna stick to the shared alliance? What's the move? So we're actually pretty excited about the Cooperative Hub. Uh, running our turret works really well for that. Uh, we can basically swing out of that uh, other warehouse with a block and just come and hook it back to the, the left or right and dump it really quickly. Our drivers have been putting a lot of time into perfecting that. Uh, we're hoping to run it and kind of figure that out today. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I think everybody's really looking forward to see how you do. Again, amazing robot design, build, software, just everything top tier. It's been a pleasure interviewing you guys. Reporting for First Updates now, I'm a boss. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million from robotic scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first choose to go to Kettering University at Kettering.edu. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.